Hello, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jake Edlin with Omnitron Systems. I'm the Director of Marketing Communications here, and I'm being joined with, by Cliff Coolidge, who's our Tech Support and Application Specialist. So Cliff will be manning the live chat today. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to chat those into Cliff, or you can email us offline directly here at these email addresses you see, or always at info at omnitron-systems.com. So I'm real excited to get this webinar series started today. Today's uh, webinar is going to be about media converters. In two weeks, we'll be doing another one about power over Ethernet, and then as well as PoE extenders and CWDM technology after that. So if you haven't already registered for those webinars, please do so as well. With that being said, we'll go ahead and get started right now and get into the nuts and bolts here of media converters. So media converters, A to Z. Agenda for today, we'll do a quick introduction to Omnitron systems, and then we'll review what a media converter is, also where it's used, when, why, and how they are used. We'll also review all the types of media converters available, how to select a media converter, and also review some application examples along the way. Real quick about Omnitron systems, here's our corporate headquarters in Irvine, California. And Omnitron is a manufacturing and engineering company meaning we design, engineer, and manufacture all of our own products in-house. We're celebrating 28 years in business, been in business since 1992. So with that, all products are made in the USA. They're TAA compliant. And Omnitron also offers free 24-7 tech support with no contracts to sign. Our products can either be commercial temperature or temperature hardened for those harsh industrial type environments. And then we have lots of customization options available, such as mounting or conformal coating. So if you do have any special needs at all, please reach out to Omnitron. That's how a lot of our products do come to market, are from customer requests. And then most of our products also do have a lifetime warranty as well. Also a quick look at our product family development timeline. This is just to show you that Omnitron is continuously engineering and launching new products into the marketplace. We've been making uh, our unmanaged media converters since 1997, and I've been adding more management and carrier Ethernet type functionality to them over the years, as well as our PoE media converters, which we've been making for the last 10 years as well. So what exactly does Omnitron manufacture? Well, we manufacture media converters and also power over Ethernet media converters, which we'll focus on today. Omnitron also makes PoE switches and extenders, as well as just Ethernet switches without PoE. We also manufacture CWDM and DWDM multiplexers, and then network interface devices and DMARC devices for telecom networks. Omnitron also sells our own line of SFP transceivers, or SFP Plus and XFP, for 10 gig type transceivers. Here's taking a look at Omnitron's product families, and these are the marketing names for each of the families. The My Converter and FlexPoint are miniature, unmanaged, cost-effective media converters. iConverter are Omnitron's flagship products, and so these are the managed media converters as well as network interface devices and multiplexers, all incorporated into the same system or platform. And then on the PoE side, Omni, the Omniconverter and RuggedNet consist of our PoE switches as well as extenders and media converters. And then as I also mentioned, Omnitron has our own line of SFP transceivers. These are also come available in different WDM wavelengths. So now we'll get into the what, where, when, why, and how. So what exactly is a media converter? Well, it's going to be a hard piece of hardware device that typically converts copper to fiber cabling, and that is the media that you're converting. These either come in a standalone device like you see here or in a plug-in car, which can be inserted into a chassis. And how it converts the, the media is by converting that electrical signal on the copper line to a light wave or a light pulse on the fiber line. So fiber optic cabling is typically used for long distance as far as extending distances past 100 meters. Copper cabling, as per the spec, can only go about 100 meters or 328 feet before that signal will start to degrade. And that's where fiber comes in and the media converter. So they'll convert it from copper to fiber, send that data a long distance up to 100 miles over that fiber cable. And then on the other end of the fiber, typically convert it from fiber back into copper in order to interface with your current equipment. Looking at the different types of fiber connectors, there's ST, SC, 
LC, as well as SC single fiber, or an SFP port, and this is where you would insert an SFP transceiver. Also, it's, it's nice to note that these fixed fiber uh, connectors are available in a ruggedized metal factor, form factor, so that if you do have any heavy-handed technicians um, that like to pull and yank fiber out, these metal connectors are a lot more ruggedized uh, as opposed to a standard plastic fiber con connector. So now we'll take a look at fixed fiber versus a, a SFP or small form pluggable transceiver. So fixed fiber connectors, as the name implies, are fixed into the device, meaning you cannot remove this fiber connector. So they'll either be ST, SC, LC, and support single or dual fiber. Versus an SFP is a small form pluggable transceiver, which features an LC connector type. And so just based on the, the SFP, each one will have its own speed or characteristics for multi-mode or single mode, for fast Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet, or 10 gig Ethernet. You can also get them in WDM wavelengths. Um, digital diagnostic capability is, is great so that you can drill into a media converter or an SFP through management and pull some real-time information. Also benefits of using SFPs is the flexibility it gives you. So you can reuse that same SFP with them different uh, switches or media converters in your network, or you can get a, a media converter that supports SFPs and pop in different SFPs if using multi-mode or single mode or sending that fiber longer distances. So where are media converters installed? Anywhere and everywhere. We primarily see them being used in central office where you have a lot of uh, high distribution of, of copper and fiber. Also see them being used in MDF or IDF closets out of the network edge. So if you're running fiber to a cell tower or to a business or to a fiber to the home, anywhere out of the network edge, you can uh, position a media converter. Also within data centers. So whether it's a privately owned data center or a, a co-located data center, lots of fiber and copper connections going on there. Media converters are being used every day. Also fiber to the desk is a huge application that's becoming very popular. And the media converters are also installed quite frequently in outdoor enclosures. So typically they'll be installed in a NEMA enclosure here with a power supply or run DC power straight to this media converter, positioned it outdoors to protect it for the, the weather and elements, and then running fiber, converting it over to copper to hook up to these cameras and Wi-Fi devices. Media converters are, are also used commonly in portable or temporary applications. So uh, whether it's a government type application or anything down to a sporting event, a concert, or the county fairs, they'll come in and set up a fiber network so they can provide free Wi-Fi access, and then from there they'll pack up and move to the next town within a few weeks. So where are media converters installed? Anywhere where there's a fiber network, really. So, you know, we see quite frequently we'll, on the enterprise side of things, as well as with service providers, our internet service providers, and then government and military entities, whether it's federal or state, city, local government, anyone who's running a fiber network can use a media converter. So when should I use a media converter? Anytime you're converting copper to fiber, converting coax to fiber or coax to copper, as well as extending a network link over fiber, or if you're bridging between two different data rates, like you're going from 100 meg to a gigabit, or from 1 gig to 10 gig. Also, they're great for converting multi-mode to single mode, or from converting standard wavelengths into CWDM wavelengths. So why should I use a media converter? Well, the number one reason is to preserve the investment in your existing network in infrastructure or equipment. So instead of having to replace uh, an expensive switch or some other device that you've already um, dedicated a lot of money to, you can get a media converter to be complementary to that. With media converters, you can also centralize your network infrastructure management, and then also reduce network maintenance and labor costs by not having to send a technician out there uh, to go out to a media converter or something to, to flip a dip switch when it can all be done through management. So media converters are very cost effective. They're also very easy to use. They're plug and play and don't need any specialized training. And then also with media converters, you can leverage the benefits of using fiber. So whether it's the, for distance, 
for bandwidth, increasing bandwidth, or increasing security, uh, fiber is the way to go. So how do I use a media converter? Well, first you're going to position that media converter or mount it. So if it's going on a, a tabletop type device, a wall mount, or if you want to rack mount those. Or you could also put them into a rack mount chassis or DIN rail mount them in for an industrial type application. And then from there, run power to the media converter and then just connect the copper and fiber cable to the media converter. Most media converters will also have uh, LED lights to show that the link has been achieved um, and that the link is good to go. So as far as powering the media converter, Omnitron has many different options. So whether you're running uh, AC out to your power, we have the AC-DC adapters. These will just plug into a, a standard AC wall outlet and then into the barrel connector on the back of the media converter. Or a DC connector. Omnitron does have media converters with direct DC power terminals. So typically we see these being used for outdoor uh, applications where DC power is available. And then you can also power a media converter through uh, the USB. So if, um, again, great for portable applications where there's no local power avail available, you can just power the media converter straight from a laptop or from a USB power source. And then power over Ethernet. So uh, in, in addition to being able to provide PoE, media converters can also be powered by PoE. So that's done by just hooking up the copper cable right into our copper port here. It sends all the data and power into this RJ45 port, saves the need for adding additional electrical outlets in your network. Now we'll get into some of the different types of media converters available. The first one, most popular, is copper to fiber. So this media converter is going to have, a, a, again, a fiber port and a copper port and either be managed or unmanaged. Also another one is called dual channel media converters. So these feature two fiber ports and two copper ports, or it's like having two media converters in one device. The fiber to fiber media converters, these are great for, again, extending fiber networks or if you're going between multi-mode or single mode, they can either have the same type of fiber connector or different types of fiber connectors. Power over Ethernet media converters will incorporate that PoE functionality to be able to provide PoE power to a device out of the copper port. And then transponders. So transponders are fiber to fiber media converters, uh, typically with SFP ports, and these can also support single mode to multi-mode or to a standard wavelength to a WDM wavelength. So the great part about Omnitron media converters is that they support a wide variety of network protocols. So all the Ethernet protocols from 10 meg all the way up to 10 gig, and then some of the, also the legacy protocols such as T1s, E1s, T3s, and E3s, or serial type protocols. Uh, you know, Omnitron, we try to never discontinue any of our products, but because we know people will still need to get a hold of some of these legacy products. Media converters will support 10G OTN networks or fiber channel protocols, Sonnet, OC3, OC12, OC48, as well as protocol transparent. So as far as talking about media converters, we've got to also talk about form factors. So they can either come in a standalone or plug-in card, but the standalones can either, uh, as the name implies, stand all alone or be chassis-based modules. So these are great, nice and flexible, because you can use the same standalone module at the edge of your network, or you can install it into a power chassis here for more centralized rack mounting. With the power chassis, these come with either one or two power supplies uh, for redundant, the ability to have redundant power supplies, and you can do hot swappable media converters within these, meaning you can remove one media converter and keep the, the rest of the network up and running. So taking a look at some more form factors on the unmanaged, we have our flex points, which are slightly larger than the deck cards. They fit in the palm of your hand. And so again, these are great for standalone devices, or you can plug that same device into a powered chassis. We also have our My Converter line, which are miniature media converters. So these are used in applications where there's not a lot of room, and so that small size is important. It gets tight in those network closets. So these are nice low cost uh, media converters. Again, same standalone device can also be plugged into a chassis. And then we have our ultra compact media converters called the My Converter S series. These are the smallest media converters in the world. If you can find something smaller, please let me know about it.
I have not been able to find one. So these are used again for, for portable applications where small size is important or uh, light weight is important as well. Chassis-based plug-in modules. So the other form factor, we have the standalone. Now we're talking about chassis-based modules. So these are also great because you can redeploy a chassis-based plug-in module in various different uh, areas of your network. So Omnitron has uh, a couple different chassis options available, either a single slot, dual slot, five slot, or a 19 slot chassis. They can be powered by AC or DC power. And then the multi-slot chassis have an ethernet backplane as far as sharing data and for management capabilities. But that same plug-in card can be redeployed into our various chassis and just popped in as the network grows or be redeployed into other areas of the network. We also have an industrial rated chassis too, so you can plug in an iConverter industrial rated media converter into this chassis and it can withstand some of the harsher environments such as negative 40 to 75 Celsius out there on the factory floor or cooking out there on the side of the road. Copper fiber media converters. So these are the most popular types of media converters that Omnitron sells. They're going to convert copper, UTP, or copper coax to fiber. So they're great for integrating fiber and copper networks. So typically you'll see a RJ45 or RJ48 copper port. And then uh, on, on the uh, coax side, you'll either see the, the coax BNC or mini BNC connectors. So here's taking a look at as far as how media converters work uh, in a classic star application here where you're dis distributing fiber from a central building in the network to some remote buildings. So our, there's already a third party copper switch in place and need to do some media conversion here within a chassis of media converters and then running fiber out to each of these remote buildings and converting it from fiber to copper in order to hook up to some of the existing equipment there and provide internet connectivity on this application here, media converters are being used on both sides of the fiber, but it's not necessary. So you can also use media converters on just one side of the fiber. So if there's already a fiber switch in place and no conversion needs to be done here at the central office, just run fiber out to that remote building and use a standalone media converter to do that uh, copper to fiber conversion. Now we'll take a look at transparent versus bridging media converters. So transparent converters, there's no speed or rate conversion going on. It's just going to pass those packets right through the device. Uh, great for you know, critical applications where time uh, can be very important, such as financial uh, or medical type applications. So in this application, you see one gig copper and a one gig fiber. There's minimal latency or minimal delay within the product versus a bridging converter. So bridging converters use store and forward technology and so this is where you're going to have different data rates or the ability to drop off different data rates within the network. So you could have a one gig fiber line and then dropping off 10 meg or 100 meg or gigabit as well. So the data frames are buffered and it checks for errors there as well. Now we'll take a look at dual channel media converters. So again, these are like ch having two media converters in one device. So they function as a, a two channel media converter or a little four port mini copper fiber switch. And Omnitron's uh, iConverters, our, our dual channel media converters support both 100 meg or gigabit SFPs. So this is really nice, so just depending on your bandwidth needs as they grow, you can swap out SFPs on the fly. So yeah, these are great for saving space in your network, which will in turn save you money. Here's the principle behind the dual channel media converters. So the two fiber ports, you can run two separate independent networks to this one device here, and each of these fiber ports will have a copper port that corresponds with it. So instead of having two media converters in one place, you can, again, send two separate uh, data networks to this one device here. It's going to save a lot of space or the ability of having to buy multiple media converters. You can also use the dual channel media converters in a chassis configuration. So you can fully populate up a iConverter 19 slot chassis here with the two GXT dual channel media converters and get up to 38 fiber to copper conversions out of this 2U high uh, rack space. So again, it's a nice scalable architecture. You can just plug in different cards as you go and cover up all the blank uh, spots here with panels. And these media converters are hot swappable. 
Now we'll talk about fiber to fiber media converters. So fiber to fiber converters convert as a multi-mode fiber to a single mode fiber or also dual fiber to single fiber. They support a variety of different protocols, typically up to uh, gigabit ethernet and then some of the Sonnet OC3, OC12, or they can be protocol transparent, meaning they can pass any protocol along. Fiber transponders also convert wavelengths from a standard wavelength into a WDM wavelength or do fiber to fiber conversions up to 11.32 gig. So here's a, a multi-mode to single mode fiber conversion application. In this case, you as the customer may have a gigabit switch located at each of these buildings and, and, and it's running a multi-mode fiber switch. Well, in between buildings, there's single mode fiber laid. So instead of having to forklift out the switch and uh, replace it with an expensive single mode switch or having to pull new uh, multi-mode fiber, you can use a fiber to fiber converter to convert from multi-mode to single mode. So it's a nice cost effective solution to get your network quickly up and running and not have to, again, to replace this expensive switch or run some more single mode or multi-mode fiber, which could be, you know, in turn a lot of time and, and headaches and permits that go into to getting that done. So the fiber to fiber converter comes into play and makes life easy. You can also use fiber to fiber converters to go from dual fiber to single fiber. So if you ever look at a fiber strand, typically there are two strands of fiber connected to each other there. So with dual fiber to single fiber converters, we're sending wavelengths here on each of these single fiber strands, uh, bidirectional or bi -di. So in one way it's sending and receiving 1310 nanometers and it's sending and receiving 1550 nanometers the other way. So again, you can split that, that dual fiber into two single fibers and have uh, data going in both directions as well on different wavelengths. So fiber to fiber transponders. These are great for going from single mode to multi-mode. You can just install a multi-mode SFP into port one here and a single mode SFP in port two and it will do the conversion for you. Or if you're going from a standard wavelength into a WDM wavelength. Again, so a standard wavelength would be like an 850 or 1310 nanometer and those will also convert into a CWDM wavelength by installing a CWDM SFP into the device. So Omnitron has two different types of, tr of transponders. We call them the iConverter XFF, which will handle speeds up to 8.5 gig, or our XG products, uh, which will handle speeds from 6 gigs up to 11.32 gigabits per second. So quick application showing you uh, WDM conversion here. In this case, we have two data centers located across town from them. The way to connect them is via fiber. So instead of having to lease or run multiple fiber lines, we're going to pack as much data as we can over a single fiber line. So that's done with what's called a multiplexer module. And then we use those transponders I just showed you and converts from a, a standard wavelength here. So you install a standard SFP into port one and a CWDM SFP into port two. So this will now convert it from a standard to a CWDM wavelength. And we can e give each of these channels their own wavelength or own color of light, multiplex them all into our multiplexer card here and then send all that data over a single fiber cable over to data center two where you have a mirror solution and you demultiplex and convert it back from a CWDM wavelength into a standard wavelength in order to feed the data into these fiber channel switches. So in essence, what you've done here is really cut down on your fiber lease payments or fiber uh, that you need to run from each building, all with CWDM technology. So management is another uh, key factor to, to consider when you're picking out a media converter. Do you need management capabilities? So the benefits of unmanaged media converters that plug and play, there's not a lot to configure. They have dip switches on the device to help control different link segments and speeds. They're very cost effective. And then there's LEDs also that will provide status of what's going on on that device. But as far as management goes, there's, there's a lot of benefits to management. So remote monitoring, being able to, to monitor your network from afar or configure a device without having to send someone out to that device to flip the dip switch as well as fault not notifications. Anytime there's an event in the network, uh, it will send a fault net notification to the network manager letting them know when and where it happened so that they can easily get out there, troubleshoot, 
solve that problem and get the, the network back up and running quickly. That will also help reduce trips to equipment at different locations, which is going to in turn increase productivity of the IT staff and save a lot of time and money. So media converters can be managed in a variety of ways. One is via uh, SNMP protocol or Telnet or a CLI command line interface. Uh, Omnitron has an SNMP protocol product called NetOutlook software. And so that's what you see here. It's a nice graphical user interface of our products. And so with this, you can monitor different chassis and media converters in the network. And then you can also do the remote configuring as well as reporting of any faults or notifications in the network. So steps to building and managed chassis is quite simple. In this case, just pick a chassis, a 19-slot chassis, populate it with the various media converter models that you require. And then by installing a network management module in slot one here, it's going to communicate with all the other cards in this chassis and send them their management commands. A lot of customers say, you know what, I don't want to sacrifice this space for a management module. No problem. You can also insert a media converter into that slot that acts as the management module, such as our GXTM2 or GM3 converters. And then from there, you would just run that fiber from any one of those media converters out to that remote location or destination to another chassis or standalone media converter, converting it from fiber over to copper. Next up, PoE media converters. So PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet, and it's a great technology in order to hook up and connect to remote devices as well as provide power to them over copper cabling. So Omnitron, we have uh, two speeds available, either the gigabit or the fast ethernet, and within the gigabit line, they support PoE 15 watts, PoE plus 30 watts, or 60 watt high power PoE, or all the way up to 100 watt PoE. So just based on the application, we have different devices uh, that it can be more cost effective, such as having a single fiber and a single copper port, to some more sophisticated ones that have advanced features and multiple fiber and copper ports as well. So just depending on the application there, different media, uh, PoE media converters will work best. So how do these PoE media converters work? So in this case, we're connecting from a control room out to the edge of a building to this IP camera that needs uh, connectivity. So we're using fiber as far as doing that long haul data run. And then from there, we're converting it from fiber to copper with a PoE media converter. It's going to auto detect how much power to send to this camera. So the camera says, hey, I need 15 watts. Or no, I'm a PTZ camera with a blower. I need 60 watts. So from there, the, the PoE media converter decides, okay, no problem. Here's all the data and here's all the power that you've requested. So all that power and data, again, is sent over one copper cabling, like a CAT5 or a CAT6 cable, out to that PoE powered device where there may not be an electrical outlet to plug this into. So that's another nice benefit of doing that. Plus, anyone can, can plug in this uh, CAT5 cable into a camera. You don't need to be a licensed electrician to do so. So here's just taking a look at some other PoE-powered devices on the marketplace that Omnitron's uh, PoE media converters are complementary to. We get a lot of projects for PoE cameras, Wi-Fi access points, uh, and then as well as PoE lighting that we're seeing quite a bit of traction in, access control, the badge readers, all the digital signage. These are all PoE-powered devices. And so, uh, again, if, you're, if you need to, to power something with PoE and it's, it's beyond the 100-meter range of your PoE switch, that's typically when you're going to use that PoE media converter. So within that, the multi-port media converters too, these devices again will, will auto-sense how much power is being requested from that device. And they'll be backward compatible to support all the various power levels needed. So it's nice to future-proof your network with a device that supports up to 100 watt PoE per port um, so that no matter how much power is being requested now or in the future, this PoE media converter will support that. Here's taking a look at an application using the PoE media converters. So in this case, we're, we're running fiber from our iConverter managed chassis media converters out to some PoE media converters out there on the, the city streets. And you can daisy chain these from one building to the next with the multiple fiber ports, and then drop off some copper PoE links here for Wi-Fi access points. And again, the great part about Omni converters are the compact size, the ability to have these in, in an industrial temperature rating, and so that you can, again, run fiber out to these street lights 
Uh, they'll be housed in this outdoor NEMA enclosure to protect it from the elements, but be able to do that fiber to copper conversion with doing PoE all in this small compact type form factor. Now we'll take a look at selecting a media converter. So here's a nice list of questions that the Omnitron application engineers will use when they're trying to help you select the right media converter. So you can always just ask yourself these questions. Uh, so it's always good to, to start with management. Is management needed? Because that will help guide on which product family to choose. From there, you'll, you'll choose your mounting options as far as do you need a chassis plug-in type module or a standalone device. If it is standalone, will it be tabletop, um, wall mounted, rack mounted, or put on the DIN rail? And then from there, you pick your speed or your protocol. So if you're doing Ethernet, is it 10 meg all the way up to 10 gig, or using some other type of protocol such as serial or T1, E1s? Also, <coughs> important to know the fiber connector type being used on that fiber. Is it an LC connector? Is it the, uh, the SFP style so that you could pick your fiber media converter with this fiber connector type. Also, it's, it's great to know what type of fiber you're going to use. So if it's multi-mode fiber or single-mode fiber, that will dictate the type of media converter that you're purchasing. Also, if you're using dual or single fiber. The fiber distance is great to know because that will also uh, dictate the type of optic that goes into the media converter. And then the number of fiber and copper ports that you need. Also, how do you plan on powering Omnitron's media converter? Is it with AC, DC power, from a USB power source or from another PoE switch. And then do you need any power over Ethernet power sourcing functionality? And if so, what level of wattage do you need? 15, 30 watt, 60 watt, 100 watt? Um, so always get to know these questions. And lastly, where will the device be located? If it's going to be indoors, a standard temperature device will work great. But if it's going outdoors, um, it's always good to get a wide or industrial temp media converter to support those extreme temperatures, such as negative 40 to 75 degrees Celsius. Oh, back to this. Here's again, I'm going to pause on this slide one more time. This is a great time to hit control print screen or print on your device. If you're, if you're listening on a phone, go ahead and take a screenshot of this because if you're able to get all of these questions answered, you're able to select a media converter and get the right device every time. So now we'll review some other common application examples, industrial applications. So again, Omnitron's industrial media converters are used out there in industrial applications. So if you're running fiber from that industrial Ethernet switch out to the factory floor and they need to convert to copper, the main thing you're looking at here is for a media converter that supports an industrial temperature range, so negative 40 to 75 or up to 167 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, this uh, industrial media converter can be powered by AC or DC power. Omnitron also does have industrial chassis as well, so you can plug in an industrial media converter card into this chassis and it will support that negative 40 to 75 Celsius. So it's a nice a flexible platform here so you can swap out different media converters based on your application. And these will typically be DC powered. Data centers are another huge area where media converters are used. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're connecting customer cages, all that data is coming into the service provider area, and then from there it needs to be distributed out to the customer cages anytime it's going beyond 100 meters or 328 feet. So with the iConverter platform, you can install media converters that have different protocols such as T1 or Ethernet or different speeds such as gigabit or 10 gig and then run those fiber links out to the customer cages where you'll use a standalone media converter to convert from fiber to copper in order to hook up to their servers or switches. PoE powered media converters. These are great media converters when you're trying to just, again, save money by not having to install additional electrical outlets in your, net, in your network closet. Um, and you want to run fiber out from a PoE switch out to a remote camera. So this PoE switch you already have may not have any fiber ports or you've used them all. Um, but from here, you, again, you can just provide PoE power and data right into the copper port of the PoE powered mic converter. It sends the fiber and data all over this long distance out to a, an Omni converter PoE media converter where here we're going to inject power PoE up to this device up to 100 meters away from the PoE media converter. So again, a great way to run fiber from a PoE switch, just power it straight from PoE 
keeps things nice and clean in the network with all these, without all these additional electrical uh, cords. Another great thing too is you couldn't run an electric cord to it, and now it gives you redundant power, both from AC or DC and that PoE switch. Some portable applications, like I mentioned before, where uh, the MI converters can be powered by USB. So the US military came to Omnitron, they said, hey, we need some portable media converters that are small, lightweight, durable, and it can be powered straight from a laptop. What can you do? So we developed this product specifically for them that can be powered from the USB port of a laptop and hook up with a fi uh, fiber and copper converter right here. As most laptops don't have fiber ports, they need some sort of media converter in order to convert from fiber to copper and run this uh, fiber out long distance out to a radar type installation. So again, a great portable type device powered by USB from the laptop. You could also use that same My Converter S series though for fiber to the desk applications. So instead of uh, running a fiber NIC card in this motherboard here, where there's a bunch of software and drivers to install, you can just plug and play a media converter right to there, run fiber straight to the desk and do that copper to fiber conversion. Neither again, power it from the workstation or from a, an electrical outlet nearby. So there's no software, there's no drivers to install, which can really uh, help save on uh, install time. Field techs, they use media converters quite frequently. So again, with the ability to power the media converter straight from this uh, laptop, they can hook up all their fiber and copper cables, test out the cables, make sure those are working, test out ports on the switches that they're connecting to, and also run some testing diagnostic software right off their laptop here. So it eliminates the need for them to carry an expensive or bulky fiber tester. They can do all the testing with a media converter and some software on their, on their laptops. And then power over Ethernet media converter. So just kind of revealing the different ways to hook up a PoE media converter. Got the, the point to point uh, fibers or you can daisy chain with the multiple fiber ports. So fibers coming in, dropping off PoE and sending fiber down to the next street light down the road. So instead of having to run uh, dedicated fiber to each of these poles, you can just daisy chain with these fibers unlimited time until you've ran out of bandwidth from these cameras. Also, uh, PoE media converters with the multiple fiber ports, you can do redundant fiber. So again, if it is a mission critical application and you can't afford for the network to go down, you run these fibers into geodiverse paths so that if anything happens to fiber uh, a here that and everything switches over to, to the standby fiber. So quick summary and key takeaways. Again, media converters, copper to fiber conversion. Omnitron's uh, media converters support all the different Ethernet protocols. We also have the dual channel media converters, as well as for point to point, daisy chain or redundant links. I'll show you some of the fiber to the desk type applications, as well as extending distances out to PoE devices with PoE media converters for unmanaged or managed networks. And then Omnitron's transponders and fiber to fiber converters uh, are great for multi-mode to single mode conversion or going from dual fiber to single fiber. They also function as repeaters or amplifiers and you can double your fiber capacity by doing that dual to single fiber conversion. Then the PoE media converters. These are great for connecting remote PoE devices. So you can send all that data long distances over the fiber line, convert it over to copper, and then auto detect how much power to provide, and then provide that PoE power on the copper cable as well as the data up to 100 meters away from the PoE media converter. Uh, in the training uh, in two weeks from now, we'll be reviewing all the PoE products such as uh, this remote power cycle option. So when a device gets hung up or freezes up out there in the network, uh, there's different ways you can remotely power cycle that device. So there's some great advanced features with PoE media converters as well. A last look here at the different product families that I, that I introduced to you today are my converters and flex points. Again, the cost effective and unmanaged media converters. If you do need some management capabilities, that's when the iConverter family comes into play. And then if you need some PoE media converters, Omni converters are great for that. Any industrial type applications, that's when you get into the rugged net for PoE. So lastly, to close on, on why Omnitron media converters? Well, for one, we make quality, reliable media converters right here in USA. Lifetime warranty on all media converters. Free 24-7 tech support that's based in California. 
And with that also comes the free network design assistance for you. So if you're, if you're scratching your head, hey, is this product going to work in my network? Give us a call. We'll review the application for you for free and let you know exactly what product will work best for your type of application. And then with all the different uh, temperature ranges and powering options and fiber connector types, uh, Omnitron truly is a one-stop shop for media converters. Uh, there's also no minimum order quantities from Omnitron or any dropship fees. And we've got excellent product availability. So if you are running into any long lead times with any of our competitors, let us know about it. We'll see what we can do to help speed that things up for you. So I want to thank you again for, for joining today's presentation. Uh, I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions at all, uh, or if you'd like to register for some more Omnitron webinars, you can do so here at the same link, omnitron-systems.com forward slash Omnitron webinars. So I want to thank you again for joining. I uh, really do appreciate you guys taking the time to learn more about Omnitron products today. If you have any questions at all, you can go to our website, omnitron-systems.com, or email us at info at omnitron-systems.com. Thanks again. My name is Jake Edler. Hope you enjoyed this presentation, and look forward to presenting to you here in two more weeks.